Hello and welcome to this third session on the listening journey through the first book of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier. My name is Birgit Matzerat. I am a pianist and teacher and I'm your travel guide on the journey. The preludes and fugues in D major and D minor that we're going to hear today present a great deal of variety in style and expression. That said, the two preludes also have something in common. They're both pattern pieces. The D major prelude is an improvisation on a melodic pattern. This is how it goes. That's the beginning, the first phrase. If you take the second phrase and just continue to play it, it would take you all the way through the circle of fifth. That brings to mind the idea of perpetuum mobile, a device that never stops once it is set in motion. If you have a moment after this, just for fun, go on the internet and check out a pendulum wave. You look at these patterns and you realize the idea just perfectly matches this piece. The D minor prelude follows a harmonic pattern. This is the opening. <clears throat> The way the broken triads whirl around reminds me of fallen leaves twirling in the autumn wind. The offbeat <clears throat> melodies that are created through the patterns give the piece a touch of jazz, just as the walking bass that accompanies them throughout large parts of the piece. Back to D major. The fugue is unique in the entire book. If you heard it, not knowing what it is, chances are you wouldn't think fugue. This is the rhythm that catches the ear. I'm going to play the ending of the piece. So you have this feature of what we call a dotted rhythm. And in the Baroque, we often find it in a type of piece called French Overture. Bach actually wrote a suite called the French Overture, and the first movement starts with this rhythm. Also, if you listen to the uh, Overture of Handel's uh, music for the Royal Fireworks, you'll find that. So it conjures up the image of royal court, of pomp and splendor. It's quite an unusual idea for a fugue, but maybe Bach wanted to demonstrate that he could turn any kind of idea into a fugue. The fugue in D minor, the last piece I'm going to play today, is a somewhat tormented piece. This is the subject. sounds somewhat like a question. In the conversation between the three voices of this fugue, the subject gets turned on its head. We call that inversion. And this is what it sounds like. If the subject states one point of view, you can imagine the inversion as the point of view of the opponent. The fugue ends with a reconciliation of these opposites, pairing up the first motif of the subject in its original form with its inversion. This is what that sounds like. Like most fugues in minor, this one also uh, ends with a major chord. 
reconciliation between opposite points of view, wouldn't it be nice if we achieved that in life more often? So here are the preludes and fugues in D major and D minor.
Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the music and see you again tomorrow at 12. Have a good rest of the day.